Good afternoon, everyone. Let me acknowledge the presence of the Cabinet colleague, Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, our Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, senior functionaries of the government, invitees, fellow citizens and residents. It is a privilege to report to you via this press conference. Today I want to update you on our plan to keep our people safe from COVID-19 and to get our country and our economy back on track to a stronger and safer future. There are several matters of national interest, but I will start with the most significant one, that is our continued fight to contain and defeat COVID-19. This is, of course, achievable should we realize herd immunity. Herd immunity is critical to our plans for expediting economic recovery here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Our future will be stronger and safer when we reach this significant milestone. For this reason, on February 22nd, we commence our vaccination rollout with the declared objective of achieving herd immunity. That is at least 70% of our population inoculated. Our target population is that group of citizens and residents 18 years and over. Four weeks after we have inoculated 7,803 persons or just about 24% of the target population. I'm advised that in Europe, the percentage of the population inoculated so far is about 11%, and in the USA, after four months of their vaccination rollout, only 12% of its population is vaccinated thus far. St. Kitts and Nevis is doing comparatively well with its vaccination rollout, given the reality of vaccine hesitancy, cynicism, and misinformation. I must urge even more persons to get vaccinated. Do this in order to protect yourself from the worst effects of COVID-19. Do it for your loved ones, and do it, please, for love of this beautiful country. Do it so that we can put thousands of workers back to work again in tourism and hospitality. And do it so that we can all be safe. There is now a global shortage of vaccines. Production has not kept pace with expectation. Additionally, there has been an unfortunate rise in vaccine nationalism where rich countries are hoarding vaccines, supply chains have become unreliable. Only last Friday, at the meeting of the OECS Authority, and again this morning at a virtual meeting of the ACT Accelerator Facilitation Council, I raised this matter in my capacity as CARICOM Lead Head and Health HIV and Human Resources with the illustrious Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros, and other council members at the Facilitation Council meeting today. I urge increased advocacy and action to ensure that small island developing states like St. Kitts and Nevis and other member states of the OECS and the wider CARICOM concentric circle are not disadvantaged. It was reported that 76% of all vaccines have been secured by the 10 richest countries. I propose that vaccines should be distributed to those countries most in need and on account of vulnerability. At the meeting of the OECS heads, Dr. Tedros agreed to undertake specific outreach to secure more vaccines for our vulnerable region. Today, he advised me 
that he had made the necessary inquiries on behalf of the region, and he is awaiting some firm word from those intervention. At present, here in St. Kitts and Nevis, we have more than half of the vaccines received to date. We have received 22,000 doses of vaccines, of which 2,000 doses were made available to the government and people of Grenada. At this time, we have enough to give a second dose to all those who have received their first jab. The truth is, while the vaccine is available, all of us must take active steps to be inoculated. My message to those who are waiting is, do not wait. Seize the moment and vaccinate now while vaccine is available. I want to commend the Ministry of Health for making all 11 health centers on St. Kitts available for persons to access the vaccine. Additionally, every Saturday, I repeat every Saturday, the Newtown and Irishtown, St. Paul's and Tabernacle Health Centers will be opened from 9 a.m. to 12 noon to accommodate those persons who could not make it during the 1 to 5 p.m. slot in the work week Monday to Friday. As it is now, all 11 health centers on St. Kitts and six health centers on Nevis provide, provide vaccines during the period 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. For many persons, that time slot is not convenient. For the last three weeks thereof, we have made available the vaccines at the health center in Newtown and in Bastia, that is the Irish Town facility. From this Saturday, we have added some other health centers, St. Paul's and Tabernacle to the two in the city of Bastia. I'm advised that in Nevis, the Gingerland Health Center and the Charlestown Health Center will be open on some Saturdays, so you have to pay attention to which days. In Nevis, in St. Kitts going forward, every Saturday between 9 and 12, this service will be available. I turn now to the matter of the safety of the AstraZeneca vaccine. AstraZeneca's vaccine is very safe. About 500 doses of this vaccine were made available to the region. Yesterday, data was released from a long-awaited USA-based safety study of the AstraZeneca vaccine. The study confirmed that there is no evidence of increased risk of thromboembolic or blood clotting events or rare blood clots associated with the AstraZeneca vaccine. This is helpful news. Additionally, the European Medicine Agency and the World Health Organization both have reported that the AstraZeneca vaccine is very safe and has been effective so far. Our own health experts have assured us that the vaccine is very safe. The vaccine that we are using has passed multi-layered evaluation by expert panels before it was granted emergency use approval by the prestigious World Health Organization. Our early actions helped contain transmission of the virus and kept the people of St. Kitts and Nevis safe. We will continue to explore all avenues to secure additional vaccines through the COVAX facility and through bilateral and multilateral mechanisms. Our Ministry of Health continues to provide guidance on the procurement of vaccines. Turning now to the economy. The economy here and everywhere 
slowed as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Indeed, 255 million equivalent full-time jobs were lost worldwide as a result of COVID-19, according to the International Labour Organization. Vaccines are now critical to get the global economy back to full performance and productivity. Everyone must play a part to get our economy back to work. In my view, the first positive action is to get vaccinated. The business community and our churches will continue to encourage more of their employees and members to get vaccinated, thereby contributing to the restoration of normalcy in our society. I am pleased that we are seeing some good signs of recovery. More needs to happen, of course, but we are grateful for these positive developments to which I shall now turn. We have successfully facilitated the return of 649 Ross University students to St. Kitts and a number of students from UMHS to our shores with resultant increases in business for landlords, operators of rental cars and restaurants. Education tourism is critical to the restoration of our stay over and long stay tourism. We have been engaging with other universities to see how working together, we may be able to facilitate the return of all their students to the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Another positive development has been the movie making as a new niche in tourism. Presently, two movies are being filmed in St. Kitts and Nevis, below deck at Park Hyatt St. Kitts and one year off for Nevis. This is a new an exciting opportunity that came our way as a result of our track record at managing COVID-19. When we engage Mr. Martinez, the principal of MSR Productions, he indicated that he had several choices to film his movies. Barbados recommended to him the Dominican Republic he said what made up his mind about Senkits was our performance, excellent performance in management of the COVID-19. So it's a good thing that from the very onset, we pursued the highest standards to keep our people safe. When several countries were debating, should they adopt the gold standard in terms of quarantine? Should it be no weeks? Should it be seven days, five days? We were very clear up front. Our first priority was to keep our people safe and we opted for the 14 day quarantine period. We have not changed it. Those who had taken a shorter period of time have had to, as a result of the upsurge in um, COVID-19 cases in their country to extend their own quarantine period. We look then at the medium and long term. Some persons see this thing as a short term response. I want to commend the good advice, the excellent advice that we've had to date from our health planners. And though it has not always been easy we have been determined that life first and everything else thereafter. The principal of MSR Productions has promised to deliver six movies this year. We are hopeful that the success of these seven movies, Below Deck and the six others, augurs well for the future development of the film and creative industry here in St. Kitts. This will bring much visibility to 
and interests in St. Kitts and Nevis as the best place to visit, to do business, and to live. We have, in my view, the beginning of a viable film and creative arts industry, and we shall work together with other stakeholders to harness it for the benefit of our young people who will secure jobs, incomes, play roles as actors and actresses, and movie stars. We appreciate the confidence in our economy by those who are in the hotel sector. Several hotel properties are at advanced stages of completion. Trinity Sunset Shores, Seaview Hotel, and Hillsborough Suites Hotel should be completed during the course of the year with opportunities for permanent jobs, real incomes, and increase in hotel room stock to more competitive levels. The construction sector is a key driver of economic growth. And in this regard, we note several private sector projects such as the TDC Dewar's Residential Middle Income Project and the Luxury Villa Development Project at Royal St. Kitts Hotel, all of which have already started. These, of course, will be buttressed by ongoing government projects, such as the Island Resurfacing Project and the Old Road Rehabilitation Project. We are expecting during the course of the year to add two other major capital projects in the new correctional facility at Estridge Estate and, of course, the Barstair High School in East Barstair. To our first-time homeowners, my government continues to support our people who are constructing their first home through the First-Time Homeowners Mortgage Program. Under this program, qualified applicants are granted a significant waiver of duty and construction materials for their home. For the year so far, 41 persons have benefited from duty-free concessions. Last year, 151 persons received duty-free and building materials totaling $26.2 million. We are doing all we can to help persons build their homes, increase their stake in our country, and create and improve the business climate. Speaking of the business climate, confidence is returning. The statistics reveal that 183 small and medium-sized enterprises have been approved so far, compared to 100 and 43 licenses issued in 2020, up 28% for the comparative period. To further boost support to small and medium-sized enterprises, my government will make available shortly an additional $5 million to the Development Bank to lend to businesses with viable plans. This was a commitment made in our budget for the financial year, paragraph 28 of the budget address, to be specific. I now want to present an update with respect to severance matter, severance payments. This, of course, is a matter of concern for several hundreds of our people who have suffered largely as a consequence of the closure of the tourism industry as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The government remains concerned regarding the delays in the processing of claims. There were several explanations advanced at yesterday's cabinet by the Labour Commissioner for these delays. The unprecedented number of persons 2,839 persons who submitted severance claims on account of COVID-19. Never before has that volume 
of applications being submitted in any year. The unprecedented volume of records to be processed, a maximum of 17 years employment records would have to be tracked and reviewed for those who are entitled to maximum compensation on account of the year's work. The failure of employers to pay in their contributions to the servants fund was a major matter creating delays. If no monies were paid into the fund by the employer, the traditional approach has been to hold off on the payment. Since if nothing got in on your behalf, nothing should come out. And then finally, there have been discrepancy in the data between what may have been put on the application form versus what the official records at Social Security and otherwise would reveal. I want to report that notwithstanding there has been a delay in the processing of a large number of claims, the federal government has to date already paid out $33.8 million in severance payments. $23.8 million dollars. At yesterday's meeting of the cabinet, it was decided to expedite the processing of claims by recruiting additional workers on a temporary basis. An additional work shift will also be implemented and further support will be made available to the Labor Department. We are determined that notwithstanding the practice of not giving support to claims for which no payment had been made into the fund, the government, out of compassion, would honor all claims, even where the employer has not paid over his contribution to the severance fund. There are millions of dollars outstanding as a result of unpaid contributions to the severance fund by employers. The Social Security Board will commence legal action against delinquent employers. I want to encourage those delinquent employers to make payment plans with the Social Security and save themselves the embarrassment and expense of a court trial. We will also provide an, av an advance payment to persons whose claims have not yet been processed to allow them to meet their most urgent needs. A further statement will be made on this initiative later. The Financial Secretary at this particular moment is working with the relevant parties, stakeholders, to do the necessary computation. What the cabinet has committed, that the government will intervene, provide some interim relief to allow persons to meet some of their most urgent needs while their claims are being processed. This, of course, will bring some helpful relief to many families who are waiting their pensions. I want to turn to the matter of appointments and in this regard to announce that Mr. Winston Handy has been appointed as our counselor at the St. Gitz Nevis Embassy in Havana, Cuba. And secondly, a Ms. Brenda Foreman has been granted approval to serve at the St. Kitts and Nevis's Honorary Council in Ontario, Canada. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs advised that this second appointment had the support of the Government of Canada. Ms. Foreman has her roots in Kayan. Indeed, her proud mother, Marge, is here, and I want to extend congratulations to her. The fourth meeting of our National Assembly for 2021 is slated for this Thursday, the 25th. 
Bills up for debate include the Gaming Control Bill 2021, the Companies Amendment Bill 2021, the Income Tax Amendment Bill 2021, and the Civil Aviation Amendment Bill 2021. Our National Assembly is functioning well again. The Parliament is meeting regularly to transact the people's business. Finally, as the government seeks ideas and work with critical stakeholders to ensure that the economy's recovery is expedited, we will meet shortly with the Chamber of Industry and Commerce to discuss where we are at and how our mutually reinforcing actions can spur greater economic activity. This meeting, of course, has been preceded with consultations with the farmers, the fishers, and with representatives of the bus operators. My government approaches these consultations from a philosophy and expectation that working together we can achieve more for our beloved country of St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you very much, and I now open for representatives of the media to pose any question of concern. <laughs>